I'm a great fan of classic cars. This is my 911, my age, great looking. However, my 911 puts me really into a dilemma. I love the car. But at the same time, I have even stronger feelings for the climate emergency. I truly believe we need to change in order to safeguard the future of our children. I guess many people share with me the same kind of multiple green personality. They fly long distance for their vacations and take their coffee mug to Starbucks for a refill in order to protect the environment. Isn't that weird? My name is Pierre Wobon. I'm really happy to be here today. And I'd like to elaborate about an idea how to solve the climate emergency. Nothing more, no big deal. <laughs> Our flashpoint is global warming caused by CO2 emissions. During the last 100 years, the temperatures increased by 1.5 degrees. And if mankind does not reduce the CO2 emissions, our children will experience another hike of 4 to 5 degrees Celsius within the next 100 years. There is scientific evidence that this will cause a significant damage to our planet. For example, the ice on, on Greenland, the home of Johnny Polar Bear, is going to melt. The consequences out of the climate change will lead to a rise in sea levels of up to 70 meters. Politicians of all over the world have recognized the problem. In 2015, nearly 200 nations signed the Paris Agreement to fight climate change. They want to limit global warming to less than 2 degrees Celsius. Well, since only talk and little action has followed, climate change was on the top of the agenda during this year's European Parliament elections. It was also one of the reasons why we see the Fridays for Futures demonstration. The young generation demands for action. As a former CEO of SMA Solar, a leader in the field of solar inverter technology, I regarded the Paris Agreement as a turning point for our industry. I was excited and I was thrilled because the measures necessary to reach the ambitious targets are leading to a massive expansion of renewable energy. And it's not only impacting the electricity sector. You will see changes in other high CO2 emission sectors as well. So we are going to change the heating industry from oil and gas fired heating systems to polar bear friendly technology. Denmark, for instance, already passed a law that it's not allowed to use fossil energy sources anymore with new houses. We need to have the same law in Germany within the next two years in order to reach our zero emission target by 2040. You will see changes in the public transportation sector as well. So we are going to see more public transport. We will see more hybrid and electrical cars. China is at the forefront of that development, not only in the development of electrical cars, but also in creating that kind of infrastructure. So taking into account heating and mobility will increase the complexity. And it's not only because we want to change the current technology. It is because we want to connect heating, mobility, and energy to each other to be more efficient. Today. We have the computing power, we have the infrastructure, we have the predictive, uh, predictive analytics to make that happen and to solve that complexity. Ten years ago, that was not the case. So I can see the excitement in your eyes. <laughs> Let's take the Paris Agreement and translate it into numbers and then compare that to the German targets for renewable energy. So first, if we want to replace fossil energy sources with wind and solar, and I'm not only talking about dirty coal, it's also about gas. Second, 
We want to replace the current technologies in heating and transportation with clean tech. As a result, we are going to double our electricity consumption within the next two decades. So, doubling of electricity consumption within 20 years. I guess that is a bold statement. Well, Germany is already behind its CO2 targets for 2020. So actually, we need to run faster in order to hit the goal. The current government goals for wind and solar is shy of six gigs. And that is simply not enough. And that is one of the reasons why the people are demonstrating every Friday on the street. In order to limit global warming, we need to double the capacity for wind, and we need to increase the target for solar by a factor of six. So the transition from crude oil and gas to renewable energy is not a pipe dream. It's doable. We have the technology, we have the financing, and we have the land. So great. In less than 10 minutes, we are all on the same page with regard what is the reason for global warming, what is the Paris Agreement, and what is the disconnect to the German targets. But unlike a patient that comes into a hospital with weird color skin and, and fever, we know exactly the outcome. We are going to fail big if there is no progress. I think truth has to be told now. We need to accept a tax on CO2 emissions. Why shall an individual change his or her behavior if 7.6 billion people on this planet takes the option rather to wait and see. For me, it is very difficult to understand why an airfare from Frankfurt to one of the vacation destinations in Spain is less expensive than a train ride from Kassel to Frankfurt. <laughs> one of the reasons... One of the reasons for that is that the environmental damage is not charged to the traveler, which is not fair and not sustainable. So, we need to have a CO2 tax to change behavior. The environment is not a free factor of production anymore. It is that easy. Second, we need to eliminate the red tape in our regulations. In nearly every nation, you can find artificial limitations that prevent us from an accelerated growth in renewable energy. And I completely get that some nations and the oil and gas industry is not really in favor of a fast transition process. But come on, renewables are competitive. There is no reason why we should slow down that kind of process is the political target the only answer to my dilemma that I described earlier? Certainly not. I think a CO2 tax and an expansion of renewable energy should give us hope. Hope that is rooted into action. And I give you now an example how I've done that in my private life. So we live in a household of four, in a house here in Kassel, downtown Kassel, and 10 years ago, we decided to set up a solar system on our roof. And that was not out of romantic reasons. It was really because we wanted to earn the feed-in turf. A few years back, we changed our strategy. We wanted to become more or less independent from the grid. So we upgraded our modules with optimizers. We installed a battery. We had a charging station for our hybrid car. And we installed an energy management system. Today, I'm really excited about the outcome. The energy management system understands our energy behavior every day and learns from it. The software optimizes everything and takes the weather forecast and other given parameters into account. 
With just that simple device, we have gone from a produce and forget system to a smart and intelligent power plant. We are more efficient than any time before. And not only that, we produce more power than we actually need. We save roughly 10 tons CO2 emissions every year. And that is enough to compensate for our domestic heating, for our domestic traveling, and for the grid demand. Bad news, it's not enough for our international flights, for nutrition, and for the good spending. So, in order to be compliant with the targets in Paris, there are still mountains to climb for us. So, until we have a CO2-friendly heating system, we have to bridge the gap with uh, compensation schemes, like atmosphere. And we donate those, uh, that money to those organizations, and they invest in renewable energy projects in developing countries. And I feel that is equally important. We need to do there something as well. So most of the time, we are independent from the grid. During summertime, the solar system produces that much energy that we only need to have 30% of it. During wintertime, we need 100% plus the electricity grid. But that is not bad at all, because if you just source the right green electricity, then it's all fine. So going forward, there are even more opportunities for us, because our charging station is connected to our energy management and the solar system, we could rent our parking lot to commuters to recharge the electrical vehicles. I would go even further to say we could connect an entire neighborhood or fleet of electrical vehicles to an open platform and create a virtual power plant. It's time for a change to safeguard the future of our children. Many people share my view that climate change is one of the greatest problems we are currently facing. Only a few people are willing to change their behavior. In order to get a big thank you letter from Johnny Polar Bear, we need to put a price tag onto CO2 emissions. And this helps us with our dilemma, because we don't want to be moralized if we take a plane for our vacations, or if we drive a classic car at rare occasions. Now it's time for us to raise our voices. Raise our voices to push politicians to implement the laws that are necessary to reach the targets in Paris. Raise the voices to corporates to be transparent on their CO2 emissions from score one to three. And raise the voices to have the change now. We are the first generation that experienced the change of climate problems, and we are going to be the last generation that can do something about that. I believe the political and technological progress should, should give us hope. Hope that must be rooted into action. Everybody of you can invest in renewable energy, either directly or indirectly through a community program, a green tariff or a compensation scheme. Thank you very much.